because I want to discuss something that's quite basic with you today and that is the principles of the way the principles of the way that God created for you to come to God so the, the, the talk that we're having today is a part of the relationship with God series and the subject is the way. The reason why I'm calling it the way is that almost every celestial spirit calls it the way. And, uh, and in fact, uh, when I spoke of this way to God in the first century, I spoke of it as the way to God. The only way to God, actually. And so for that reason, um, almost all of the celestial spirits have used the same terminology over, over the last 2,000 years, referring to what you now call the divine love path. They don't actually call it the divine love path. They call it the way. And the way is the way, the only way to God, to having a relationship with God. Now, we've talked about the path of have, going to have a relationship with God many times before. But what I've noticed is this. Many of you are still not on it. But you think you're on it. Which is actually a bit of a problem when you think about it. When you think you're going in a certain direction. It's like, it's like you're driving on the road that you think is to Brisbane but you're actually driving to Perth, the opposite direction. And this is what we're often doing when it comes to our spiritual development, and that's what I would like to talk to you about. Um, somewhere here... I'm just looking for a Bible that I brought with me. Oh, no, Sunday morning, right? You can get... <laughs> We can get away with the Bible, can't we, Sunday morning? There are certain things that I did say that are listed in the Bible, and this is one of them that's quite, quite close to accurate. It's from Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14, for those of you who are taking notes. It says, Go in through the narrow gate, because broad and spacious is the road leading off into destruction, and many are the ones going in through it. Whereas narrow is the gate and cramped the road leading off into life and few are the ones finding it. Now, when most Christian religious people read those two verses, they assume they are on the narrow way leading to life. Do they not? Now, if we think about it, I've said few are the ones finding the narrow way to life. And how many Christians do we have on the planet around about at this point? About one and a half to two billion? Does that seem like a few to you? No. So can you see that many of these one and a half billion Christians must think they're on the way, but not actually be on it? if I said few are the ones finding it. Can you see that? Logically, that would make sense, surely. Now, the problem is that even a few of us have yet to find it, this same path, this same way. What I called in the first century the way to God. And what I would like to do today is explain to you why that is the case by going over some basic principles that we've already learned through the different presentations that have been done and then re-examining or re-looking at your own life to see whether you're finding it the way that I've explained it or not. Does that make sense? Because quite often we think we understand what's being said and from a logical perspective we get the logic of what's being said but as yet it's yet to actually hit our heart. It's yet to change our life. Our life has not substantially been modified by 
what we're doing by by what we're doing. And so, what I would like to do is for for you to consider another verse that I've also that uh, some, another thing I also said, which is only a few verses later in Matthew seven, verse twenty one to twenty three. I said, "Not everyone saying to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of the heavens, but the one doing the will of my Father who is in the heavens will." Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and expel demons in your name and perform many powerful works in your name? And yet then I will confess to them, I never knew you. Get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. Can you see it's the same principle? There'll be many people who believe they're even doing the right things. They're saying the right things, doing the right things, and yet at the end of the day, only the persons who are doing the will of God, what, what I called the will of God at that time, who are understanding the truth about the way, if you like, only those persons will actually be able to be in the celestial kingdom when they pass. No one else is able to. Not because God is selective, but because of the person exercising their own will and their own desire in different directions than what the way would indicate to follow. So when you look through uh, the Bible with some of the statements that I've made, you will see that I was referring to two separate paths. So what I called the narrow gate... is what you now know to be the divine love path. That's what many of you are calling it. And let's call it the, the way to God. Or God's way of love. Right? That's the narrow gate. And then there's this broad gate, which I said leads, and I did say it leads to the destruction of the soul generally. Even if, even if you grow, there is still a detunement from the growth of the soul at some point in the future of this path. This is the broad gate that most people are taking. So you now know that as the natural love path, And if we put love in inverted commas, right, which is man's way of love. And again, I would put love in inverted commas because it's what we often think love to be but not actually is. Um, and it is not the way to God. It is the way to man's definition of God. Which for many men varies quite markedly. Some of them feel that they are God themselves. So for them, it's the man's definition of the man's way to themselves. <laughs> for others, they believe in a, a God that a God does, an external God does exist. So it's the way to man's definition of that external God not to God's definition of God. So there are the two gates, there are the choices that we have to follow. One way takes us right the way through an everlasting series of progressions that never end, as far as we are aware. The other takes us through a limiting process, which usually begins in what I've called and referred to as the hells of the spirit world, uh, right the way through to development in love till you reach the sixth dimension or the sixth sphere of the spirit world. Whereas the narrow gate can take us from the hells of the spirit world right the way through to wherever the, it is. You could say to infinite development. Yes, that's the narrow gate. Now, you notice in the Bible it actually said narrow is the gate and cramped the road. And this is something that a lot of us are still uh, really 
having a lot of struggle and difficulty with. You see, we rebel against a close definition of truth. We, we, we would like the truth to be exactly what we would like it to be and nothing more or less than that. And what you would like it to be is often very different to what I would like it to be because of our different emotional injuries and hooks that we have and our different addictions that we have. So when, when we say, oh, I don't want to be cramped in any way, what we're often feeling when we're cramped is restricted by others' definitions of things or God's definition of things. We feel a sense of restriction for some reason. And usually those restrictions are all emotionally based, as you'll see in, a, in this discussion later. But at this point, for many of us, we look at this whole definition of narrow is the gate and cramp the road, and already we have a lot of negative connotations that we're putting on those two words, do we not? We think narrow means we won't have freedom, cramped means we won't have freedom. We automatically have a feeling of wanting to rebel, doing it our own way. The narrow gate is the gate of God reliance trust and faith in God. The broad way is self-reliance. The only person we have trust and faith in is ourselves, if we ever do even have trust in ourselves. Right? And these are the two gates that we have the choice of entering or not entering. Now, the reason why I called them a gate was because there was a transition that needed to happen to enter a gate. There has to be a vent that occurs opening a gate. Something that you do to make a transition from one way to the other way. And for many of you, you've been hearing the definition of the two gates, you've been looking at all of the different talks and everything, but you're yet to actually physically make the transition from the broad gate into the narrow gate. Because there's something that has to happen emotionally inside of yourself before that transition is actually made. Does that make sense to everyone? There's an emotional adjustment that needs to be made. And what we'd like to do today is talk to you about that emotional adjustment that needs to be made. 